So you just received some free milkweed seeds from the Tennessee Department of Transportation. And like many other people, you got them a lot later than you thought you would. So what's next? So let me start off by saying you did not get them too late, so don't freak out. Uh, in fact, I think you got them right on time. And that's because milkweed, like most other native plants, requires a process called cold stratification in order for their seeds to germinate. Essentially, cold stratification is just a period of prolonged cold temperatures uh, in the presence of moisture. And it's that simple. And normally we call that winter when it happens outside. So the reason that these seeds need cold stratification is because they have this built-in dormancy mechanism that prevents them from germinating before the killing frosts have even happened or from germinating during periods of prolonged drought. There's a lot of different ways that you can go about achieving the process of cold stratification. Some people do it in the refrigerator. My personal preference is to let nature handle it. It's been doing it for a long time and it'll be doing it for a long time after I'm gone. And that brings me to the process of winter sowing, which is my personal favorite method. First off, let me say you can absolutely just take your seeds and throw them out into your flower beds or your wild areas. That's a totally fine method. Obviously, that's exactly what nature does. But the benefits, in my opinion, to winter sowing in a protected container is that it guarantees more seeds will one, make it to germination, but two, make it to maturity as well. Now, I love these like orange juice jugs or a milk jug, something like that is gonna work. We're gonna get rid of this lid right here. We do not need it. Um, contrary to popular belief, the greenhouse effect is really not necessary to this process. So take that lid off so the excess heat can leave and so that rain can get into your containers or maybe you need to water them at some point. So the next thing we need to do is drill some holes in the bottom because like any pot, it needs to be able to drain. I generally just put about five 3 8 holes in the bottom of a jug this size. I tend to be partial to the 3 8 bit size but it's not that specific. Um, I think anything between a quarter and a half inch would work just fine. I think bigger than a half inch, you may be losing soil and smaller than a quarter, I think water would struggle to drain from it. Now here's the fun part. I take a razor knife and I cut starting just outside of one of these corners. It tends to be easier to just lay it down and cut downward. A sharp blade would be an advantage here. So by leaving the corner uncut, you have a little pot and a little cover just like that. And later on, we're gonna tape it back up. Now I would shoot for about three to four inches on the bottom section of the pot here. I may have actually cut this a little bit too small, but that's fine, whatever. You need to obviously fill it with soil. Now I would recommend an actual seed starting mix, if not maybe a potting mix, but don't go with a raised bed mix. They're often just too heavy. It will work, but if you want the best results, go for something that's intended to be germinating seeds in. I usually like to pre-moisten the soil like this so that I don't have to water it a ton after I've planted the seeds. Soil has been sitting in my garage for a little while and it's like borderline hydrophobic. Not more than borderline, it's hydrophobic. That's kind of annoying. I'm actually planting in here some asters right now, which is a great companion plant for milkweed. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now, how many you sow in here, totally up to you. Um, it is easy to do too many. I would say something like two or three in each corner is good because you can often split these, like you just pop the whole block of dirt out and pull it apart. And then you can either pop them up or plant them straight in the ground. And this says plant no deeper than the width of a seed. So I would just take a little pinch of soil and just sprinkle just enough to cover the seeds. Milkweed would be just a touch deeper, but if you notice, nature doesn't care too much how deeply it plants its seeds. Um, the frost and thaw cycle will generally make these move a little bit lower through the soil anyway. I would do just a little bit more water because I put some more soil on there. And then you're gonna close it up. and tape it shut. I use blue painter's tape because I feel like it's the perfect balance of strength. Like it'll last through the elements of winter, but it's still really easy to open up in the spring. And then label this well, notes are your friend. So you can either write the name on the jug or you can keep a master list, which is what I tend to do. I just like it more. 
And then I will use a Sharpie and a China marker. It may be also called a grease pencil. And I'll write on the plastic and the painter's tape of the jug. Just the redundancies make me feel better about it. If one fades off, then the other ones may still be there. And then you just wanna go and set this somewhere um, with very average conditions. And by that, I mean, don't set it in full sun, don't set it in full shade, don't set it under like a covering near your house and don't set it up against your house either. Cause you want this to feel the normal conditions like you want it to get cold. You want to check the moisture routinely. Uh, I can tell you from experience, if you put it in the right location, you're not going to need to water it at all. Um, maybe in the spring if you have some really dry really hot conditions but generally they're ready to plant before you need to water them so what are the next steps well in the spring when they have a couple sets of true leaves you're going to go ahead and pop them out of their containers split them however you want and plant them keep them well watered for a week or two but i think you'll be surprised how quickly they set into their conditions and don't need supplemental water don't be surprised though if you don't really see them doing anything for the first year or even two it's a very common saying when it comes to native plants that the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, and the third year they leap. They just focus on those roots the first year and then they will begin to slowly spread and then by year three they'll really pop and you'll be blown away. The three types that I've seen people receiving from the Tennessee DOT is common milkweed, which is Asclepius syriaca. I'm certain I'm saying these scientific names wrong, so please don't judge me, but that's common milkweed. There's Asclepius incarnata, which is rose milkweed, and then Asclepius tuberosa, which is butterfly weed. So that common milkweed, the syriaca, uh, as the name implies, is probably the most common one you're gonna come across. And I would argue that that's because it's probably the most adaptable to site conditions. It can grow anywhere from partially wet conditions all the way to completely dry, loves full sun, but it's also no stranger to growing like on the edge of a woodland area, so it's totally fine in partial shade as well. It sports this pinkish purple spherical flower on the top of it. They're very cool looking plants. Kind of reminds me of an allium. Now don't let this scare you or keep you from planting it, but you should know that common milkweed is probably the most aggressive milkweed you're gonna come across, and that's partly because it'll grow pretty much anywhere, but also because it spreads underground through rhizomes and they can go pretty deep and pretty far. So don't be surprised if you see it popping up places that you didn't plant it. I would argue this is also a benefit of the plant because we need aggressive species to take back our wild areas. But you also may not want to plant this like in the front flower bed of your house if you like to keep a managed lawn. Sclepias incarnata, also called rose milkweed, swamp milkweed, marsh milkweed, red milkweed, pink milkweed, and probably a bunch of other things. Uh, as the name in implies is tended more towards wet areas. So this will grow in pretty wet conditions, not quite bog-like, but certainly spongy areas. It does grow a bit taller than common milkweed, which generally caps out about three feet. Swamp milkweed can easily hit four, if not higher, and does have a little bit more interesting of a structure, I would say, where it grows almost tree-like with these branches shooting off. And then it forms this big pad on top of pink flowers, and it's really pretty. Asclepius tuberosa, again, another very different milkweed, especially in contrast to in Carnata, which is about four feet tall, pink flowers, and grows on wet areas. Tuberosa is about two feet tall, has orange to yellow flowers, and it has to grow in a dry area. It will not survive in a wet area. Tuberosa is probably the most well-mannered milkweed in that it is not an aggressive spreader at all, and when it only grows to a height of two feet, that makes it a great option for like front flower beds or something with a really neat formal structure to it. I would highly recommend that you pick a few key species to plant alongside your milkweed to really get the most out of your seeds. Because as you'll come to find out, the flowers of milkweed are often a little underwhelming, but in my area, things that I always, always see monarchs on are liatris, like any variety of it, goldenrod, same thing, and asters. These are pretty crucial plants for monarchs. Really, any butterfly is gonna love them but especially monarchs. And what I love about that combination is that liatris generally blooms in about July or so, and that'll carry you through summer, and then your asters are gonna pop up, and then your goldenrod's gonna carry you through like November. So you'll always have something available for those monarchs in the fall migration. And then you should also pick some things for the spring migration as well. What's interesting is monarchs will actually pass through Tennessee oftentimes earlier than the milkweed has even bloomed. So you know they're definitely not coming for the flowers, and you need to provide some other offerings for them. And that's definitely one area that I'm trying to do better in this year for sure. So thank you for supporting natives and happy planting.